In this video, we're going to look at some questions based on sets. So here I have my first question. We have the universal set with numbers from 1 to 10. Then we have set A with odd numbers and set B with factors of 12. Now for part A, we have given that A is a subset of the universal set, we want to list the members of A. So odd numbers would be, I'm just going to list this out here, odd numbers. You know, that's going to be 1, 3, 5, 7 numbers that when you divide by 2, you would get a remainder. Okay, so 9, 11, 13, and so on. Now, the thing is, we are saying that A is a subset of the universal set, and the universal set only goes up to 10. Therefore, set A cannot cross 10. So, serious this. So, my first question for part A, set A is equal to, first odd number is 1, then you have 3, 5, 7, 9, and as you go to 11, that will be more than 10. And 11 is not contained in the universal set. It's not a member of the universal set. Therefore, we can't put a 11 in set A. Therefore, we have to stop at 9. Now, same thing with the factors at 12. If I were to write the factors at 12, That will be the set, you know, 1 can go into 12. So these are numbers that can go into 12 without leaving a remainder. So 1 can go into 12 without leaving a remainder. Then you have 2 can go into 12 without leaving a remainder. Same as 3, 4, 6, and 12. So these are the factors at 12. But again, if we look at our universal set, we're going up to 10. And we see that B is a subset of the universal set. Therefore, 12 is not a member of the universal set, so 12 cannot be a member of set B. So I'll erase this. So for part B, we're going to have set B. We contain 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And we stop here. We don't include the 12 because 12 is not a member of the universal set. So that's part A and part B, where we list the members of set A and set B. So now we want to draw a Venn diagram to represent the information above. So part C. Now before we draw the Venn diagram, you must know if the circles for set A and set B are going to be disjoint, intersecting, or a subset. So what I'll do is go through the elements of set A and set B to see if they have any elements in common. So when I do that, I have 1 in set A and also 1 in set B. I have 3 in set A, also 3 in set B, and that's it. So only 1 and 3 is common to both sets, which means we have intersecting circles. So set A and set B would intersect each other. All right, so here I have the structure for my Venn diagram, the rectangle to contain the universal set, the circle here to contain the elements of A, and this circle here to contain the elements of B. So first thing we'll do is put in the elements that they have in common, which is the 1 and 3. So I'll put 1 and 3 here. Then the remaining members of A, the 5, 7, and 9, will come out here. So we have 5, 7, and 9. And then the remaining elements of B, which is the 2, 4, and 6, will come here. So we have 2, 4, and 6. And now we need to check to see if all the elements of the universal set is contained in this rectangle. So here I see 1. So let's cancel off 1 here. Here I see 3. So I cancel off 3 like that. Here I see 5. Cancel off 5 like that. Here I see 7. I cancel off 7 here. Then I have 9. Cancel off the 9 like that. Now I come to set B. I have 1. I already cancelled the 1 here. 2. So I cancel this 2 here. Then we have 3. I already did that. 4. So I'll cancel this off. Then we have 6. So I'll cancel this off. So I went through all the elements of set A and set B. And we've seen from the universal set that 8 and 10 is remaining. Which means 8 and 10 is not contained or are not members of set A nor set B. So I'll write the 
8 and 10 out here. And this would be my Venn diagram to represent this information. So after drawing the Venn diagram for part C, we have part D, where we want to determine for part 1, you know, what are the elements in A union B? So D part 1, we're going to have A union B would be, and that's all the elements in set A together with all the elements in set B. Now, seeing that A and B have 1 and 3 in common, we are not going to repeat the 1 and 3 twice. So we're not repeating elements. So 1 and 3 will be written once. So we can put it in ascending order. We can start with the 1, then the 2, then the 3, then the 4, then the 5. We have 6, 7. We have no 8, but we have a 9. And this will be all the elements in set A and also in set B together. So now for D part 2, we want the number of elements in A union B, the whole thing, complement. So this means not the union. See, we have A union B in brackets and then complement on the outside. So here for part 1, we had the union, which is these elements here. So not the union mean not these elements. Now remember the union was all the elements in A and also all the elements in B. And of course we did not repeat the 1 and 3. So if we say not this, then that's the 8 and the 10. So A union B in brackets complement is equal to the set with 8 and 10. So now the number of elements in a union B in brackets complement is equal to, we have 1, 2. So the 8 is one element and the 10 is the next one. So two elements in total. So you're going to put 2 here. Now this 2 is not the element 2 from here. This 2 means we have two elements in this set. And that's a number of elements in A union B in brackets complement. Now for D part 3, we want the elements in A intersect B. So those are the elements that A and B have in common with each other, which would be the 1 and the 3. So I'll just come across here and put D part 3. So we have A intersect B would just be the elements 1 and 3. Now coming to D part 4, we have the number of elements in A intersect B. B complement. Now notice the complement is outside the bracket, so it's complement of the whole thing. So here I'm going to put for D part 4, I'm just going to put A intersect B complement, the whole thing. And that would be the elements, well, that's all the elements that's not in the intersection. So if 1 and 3 is the intersection, then the 5, 7, 9, the 2, 4, 6, and also the 8 and 10 will be members of this set, A intersect B complement everything except the intersection. So I'll just write it in any order. So I have the 5, the 7, the 9. Then I'll have the 2, 4, 6. And then I'll have the 8 and 10. And therefore the number of elements in this A intersect B, well in brackets complement, would be, you just have to count up the elements in here. So I mean, you can count it on the Venn diagram as well. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or you count it here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 elements in the set. Now coming to D part 5, we want A intersect B complement. So this is we called A only. So part 5, we have A intersect B complement and that's A only which is the elements 5, 7 and 9. So A only means what's the elements in A that's not members of the set B. Now 1 and 3 are members of set A but it's also members of set B. So A only would be the members of set A alone. So we'll have the 5, the 7 and the 9. And now if you come to D part 6, 
we have the number of elements in B intersect A complement here. So this is the number of elements in B only. So part six, we have the number of elements in B intersect A complement. All right, and this is the number of elements in B only. And if we look at the elements in B only, that will be two, four, and six. The one and three is part of B. Yes, they are members of B, but they are also members of A. So what we want is the members of B only, which is the two, four, and six. So in total, that's three elements, one, two, three. So your answer here is simply three. So moving on here to part two, we have in a class of theater students. Now, before I start answer any questions, you can write down the information. All right, so we have a class of theater students. That means, I'm gonna put a note here. That means the number of elements in the universal set would be 30. All right, we have 14 students like math. So we could let M represent math. And therefore, the number of elements in math is 14. Then we have 15 students like English. So we could let E represent English. And therefore, the number of elements in E is 15. We have X students like both math and English. So that's the intersection between math and English. So we have the number of elements in math intersect English is equal to X. And we have seven students like neither math nor English. So these seven students, they are not in the set math and they are not in the set English. So they're outside the set math and English. So that will be the number of elements in math union English, the whole thing complement, and that will be seven. So now for part A, they want us to draw a Venn diagram to represent the information above. All right, so we're gonna represent this information here, which is this, on a Venn diagram. All right, so we have part A. All right, so here I have the setup. We know the circles are intersecting because we have X students that like both math and English, so that tells us we have an intersection. And the first thing we'll put in is the intersection. Now, when we put this X here, this doesn't mean the, um, the element itself is X. X is the number of elements in the intersection. So in this Venn diagram, the information that we're gonna put in here is the number of elements in the set. So now we have 14 students like math. That means this entire circle has to be 14. Well, the number of elements in this entire circle has to be 14. Now we know, if I were to put a 14 here, this entire circle would have both a 14 and X. Therefore, it would be 14 plus X students who like math. So therefore, I can't put 14 here. Therefore, math only, you know, only is without the intersection, would be 14 take away X. So we're going to have 14 take away X. And this 14 take away X, as I said, is math only. So when you add 14 take away X to X, you know, negative X plus X will be a zero and you just remove it 14. So you add these two up, you just get back 14, which will be the entire circle will be 14, which is reflective of what we have here. 14 students like math. Now, same thing for the English. We have 15 students like English. So if I were to put the 15 here, we'd have both 15 and X in this entire circle English, which would be more than 15 students, of course. So this piece here would be English only, and English only with 15 take away the sex. And then we have the seven students who like neither math nor English. So we put them outside here. And this is our Venn diagram for part A. So now we have part B, where we want to write an equation in X to represent the information in the Venn diagram. Now we know the number of elements in the universal set is 30. Therefore, everything inside this rectangle has to add up to 30. All the, well, the number of elements inside this rectangle must be 30. 
Now we know seven elements is outside here. X elements is in the intersection in terms of number of elements. 14 take away X is here and 15 take away X is here. So everything here must add up to be 30. So I'll just go to our next page to work this out. So here I have the Venn diagram. I have the question part B, write an equation in X to represent the information in the Venn diagram. I'll just note again that the number of elements in the universal set is 30. And as I said, everything inside this rectangle must add up to 30. So we're going to have 14 take away X plus this X plus this 15 take away X plus the 7 must be equal to 30. So I'll just try to pull the shade in here. This 14 take away X, that's this part here. This intersection with the X, that's this part here. This 15 take away X, that's this part here. And this 7, that's this part here. So you can see we add everything up in the rectangle and it's equal to 30, 30 students. Now come back here to answer part C. We have how many students like both math and English? Now remember the number of students who like both math and English, that's here, X students like both math and English. Therefore, the number of students who like both math and English is X, and that's the answer we're looking for. So in order to find X, come back across here, we'll have to solve this equation. All right, so let's provide the question part C here, how many students like both math and English? And now we're going to solve this equation to find the value of x. All right, so I'm just going to write it over. We have 14 take away x plus x plus 15 take away x plus 7 is equal to 30. Now we see this negative x and this positive x. Well, this is negative 1x plus 1x. And negative 1 plus 1 will give you 0. So negative x plus x would just be 0. So I can rewrite this as 14, this is 0. So let's have shade that in red, meaning I have taken this out because that is 0. And remember the plus 15, take away x, plus 7 is equal to 30. So plus 15, take away x, plus 7 is equal to 30. So now we can bring our like terms together. We have 14 plus 15 plus 7. So I can write that as positive 14, positive 15, positive 7, and then we have the negative x is equal to 30. All right, we can add that 14 plus 15 plus 7, and we get 36. So we have 36 take away x is equal to 30. Now we could transfer this 36 across the equal sign. I will turn from positive 36 to negative 36. So I'll just do an animation to do that. So I've taken this positive 36, transfer it across the equal sign. It's positive right now. As it crosses the equal sign, it will turn to negative. And now we could place it behind this 30 like that, and we have 30 take away 36. So we'll have negative x is equal to 30 take away 36 is negative 6. And now we can just multiply both sides by negative 1. So negative 1 by negative x is positive x. And negative 1 by negative 6. And our negative by negative is a positive. So you get positive 6. So x is equal to 6. Which will mean 6 students like both math and English. So I'll just write that out. 6 students like both math and English. And that will bring us to the end of this video.